Hey there, fourth grade. It's Mr. Remedies coming to you with our fourth and final lesson of the week. Pow, right there, big and bold. You see it on your screen. Authors often write uh, about the same topics, themes, and settings in their books. That's what we're talking about today. And I know you guys are going to smash it out of the park. As always, Ms. Remedies is not going to surprise you. Pretty consistent. We have learning goals and success criteria coming your way. Uh, our learning goal today, oh yeah, right over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are learning to understand and recognize that authors do often revisit the si similar themes, topics, and settings within their books. Help you along the way? Bam, right down below. Uh, we have some I can statements. First and foremost, you're going to be able to say to yourself, I can define topic, theme, and setting which is really important. Number two, I can identify similarities between books by the same author. That's some. That's seriously important today. And number three, equally as important, is I can understand that authors can be identified by their style. Right? You hit all those three along the way, you'll pull right into success station, population U. So let's look at three important vocabulary words, then we'll head off to an example of how to do just this, and then we'll be out the door. All right, guys, let's make it happen. All right, first up, first, first, first up is theme. Now, this might be a little bit of review for you, so we're not going to spend too much time on it. Theme is the underlying message of the story. It's the big idea of the story. So, for example, uh, in one of my favorite series of books, the first one in the book, Mr. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, is humility is important. Right? Uh, that might be a theme. Okay. Not too specific. It's a big idea. Humility is important. Okay, so theme, the big idea of the story. Coupled with that, similar, and sometimes they often get confused, but the next important word is topic. Topic is quite simply what the story is about. So further using uh, the Harry Potter series as an example, the Harry Potter series is about wizards. That's the topic. Right? And finally, setting. Now you guys know what setting is. This is nothing new to you guys. You guys are pros at this. Setting is quite simply the time period and location a story takes place. So again, using our boy Harold Potter, uh, his story takes place largely at a school for wizards. That is the setting. All right. Boom. Quick review. You got it. You guys are all stars. So let's take these ideas. Um, let's really examine and start to look for some patterns uh, across books by the same author. To do that, we're going to look at recognizing patterns. Uh, we're going to visit uh, some books by the author uh, Douglas Florian. Uh, so you might remember him as the author of On the Wing, In the Swim, Mammalabilia, Insectopedia, very, very interesting names, and Oh, a second copy of In the Swim. Well, look at that. He wrote it twice. Boom. He must have really loved that book. All right. So, he, remember, he's written a couple of these books. What do you guys remember about these books? Hmm? What do you remember? Anything at all? What do you remember? Well, uh, I remember quite a bit. Um, you can get visual clues from the covers of the books. However... My big question is, what do they have in common? Uh, well, not In the Swim. That's the same book. That's what they have in common. <laughs> but what do all of these books have in common generally? Uh, if you think back to what they're all about, uh, they have a genre in common. Uh, they are all books of poetry. Uh, Mr. Florian writes predominantly in the poetry genre. Uh, if you remember there, their setting is also very common. They're all set in nature. The topics are very similar in the fact that they're all about animals, birds, insects, or reptiles. And the themes are pretty similar, even though they don't exist in, in all of them, uh, each one of them. Uh, some of his books are giving advice about how to approach the animals or the insects or whatnot. Um, but most of all, his theme of sharing information can be imaginative is predominant in nearly all of his books that, of poetry. Hey, Mr. Florian likes to share his information about these insects and these critters um, in an imaginative way. 
in the form of poetry, which is why you pick poetry. All right. So there we go. We have recognized the pattern. Uh, we know, and this is going to be pretty important to us. So my next question, pal, right on your screen again is, why are these patterns important? Why are, um, why are patterns uh, in authors' books important, and why is it important for us to recognize them, to be able to spot them with our keen reading eyes? Um, and that best sums it up to what it can offer us as readers. Right? So first and foremost, we can see an author's improvement over time. Um, if I see Mr. Florian has written a book in 2000, the year 2000, and I generally enjoy it, but then I read another book of his written in 2010, and I can see how it's gotten better. And then if he puts out a new book here in 2021, then I can see how he has progressed as an author. I can appreciate and critique his craft a little bit better. So that is why recognizing patterns is important. Uh, number two, and this is kind of self-centered on us a little bit, uh, if we can recognize patterns in both uh, theme, setting, and topic, and if those kind of interest us or those are enjoyable for us, we can make better choices when we head off to the library or the bookstore uh, and select books for us to read for fun or in our independent reading time. So if I generally love... Uh, Mr. Florian's topics, if, I, if I'm a, uh, an animal person, if I love insects as well, then I'm going to be able to say, oh, I recognize the name. I know he writes about animals. I want to read something else by him. Right? And not just for poetry, but that can apply to any genre. Right? And number three, uh, we can actually understand the stories better because we have selected that book and we have recognized the patterns of the author. So we can kind of generally understand, well, I read three or four books by this author and they always write about the theme of accepting others. They always write about the theme of kindness towards others that may be different. So then I can be on the lookout for those themes as I read. If I notice patterns in similar characters, like we've talked about throughout the week, uh, maybe I can start to understand more and more about the motivation of those characters, because that kind of character exists in uh, multiple books. So we can really, really use uh, these patterns to benefit us in a number of different ways. All right, guys, quick lesson today. Let's head off to a review. As a review, guys, we've done a, a pretty quick lesson today, but I think a lesson that is very important. Um, we've reviewed quite a lot of stuff. It's a big old list on your screen there. We reviewed how authors often uh, revisit the same themes, topics, and settings in their books. Uh, we've talked about how uh, some definitions like topic is what the book is about, setting is where and when the story occurs, and theme is the big idea of the story, and authors often go back to those. Uh, it, then we said recognizing an author's pattern helps us understand the story better, make better choices uh, when selecting books to read, and bonus for you at, at the end of the lesson, it also clues us in on what the author values uh, themselves. You know, typically authors like to write about um, some things that interest them, or as we've said in previous lessons, uh, they want to write about things they know about. And I think that's pretty cool. So we have learned quite a bit this week in, uh, concerning author's craft. Today we talked all about recognizing patterns and how that is beneficial to us as the reader. And I know that today during your independent reading time, uh, you will put some of these skills to use. All right, as always, I've been Miss Remedies. You've been my fantastic fourth graders. And we will see you on Monday. Boom.